Hello, community. Today we talk about the economy of LLMs. Do they make sense financially? And why were they created in the first place? And why you should be careful to use the right model for you fine tuning. So here we go. Remember last time, this was our little graph here that we looked at. It's a little bit scientific. If you're interested, go back to the video, have a look. We talk about fine tuning, parameter efficient fine tuning. We talk about in context learning, the chaining, and we talk about the available models. And this is where we will start off today the available models. And as surprising as it might be to you, we do not have so many available models for us to the scientific AI community. We have, of course, here GPT 4. Beautiful. A black box you are not allowed to know anything about. We don't know even the size of GPT-4. Complete black box system. Then we have here from Meta our four Llama systems. An LLM where we have four sizes, small, medium, large, x-large. And then we have here the good old Google. This is more or less the only open source LLMs that we have. The T5 and the Flying T5. Because, yes, you guessed it, you have to ask written permission, have to send in a form to Meta that Meta will analyze your application and then it will decide if you are allowed to use the weight tensor that Meta will give you a link and a permission ticket that you can use it, but only for research, just to be clear. So, Flan T5, and you have a lot of videos about Flan T5 on my channel. Now, just to make sure, some of you ask me, hey, about this configuration for legal. No, never mind. My message is clear to you. Do not mind that Microsoft, something will happen to Microsoft. You have Shields. OpenAI is a multi layered corporate company structure with different layers that protect whatever is going to happen. And whoever is going to sue OpenAI. Microsoft, the corporate lawyers of Microsoft made sure to construct a legal construct that Microsoft is okay, beautiful, with this out of the way. Let's look at innovation theory. We have here a global player, Microsoft, and we have a small little insignificant startup some years ago, OpenAI. And the innovation happened in OpenAI. But it would not have been possible if Microsoft would have not allowed them access to their supercomputer center. So they had the idea, they had the risk, they took the risk and they developed a model. And then they went on and they went public with their model. It was a success, GPT 3.5, chat GPT. This is a construct from the innovation theory that the mother corporation sends here this little tiny startup with all the risks into the fight and see what happens. And if this little model here is successful, well, they buy this little model. And I thought the same would happen here with Google. You have Google here, the huge global corporation, and they bought DeepMind, a British small startup, 20, no, 2014, 2015, highly creative, motivated scientist, and they came up with models, Sparrow and Chinchilla, that were at the time absolutely focused to be, to be fighting against GPT-3. But the management of Google decided that it is not time to release them, to use here the same from the innovation theory, let this startup go and experience if the market accepts it, Google management decided a uh, 7% error chance is too much. Google had to lose too much of its reputation dominating the global search market. And to my surprise, I have to tell you this, because I did a video where I said Sparrow will be here, the Google equivalent to ChatGPT from Microsoft OpenAI. This never materialized. So this video I did months ago did not become reality. Anyway, if you like here AI, have a look at DeepMind, especially the new adaptive agents.
Now let's be clear. Why does GPT-4 exist? No, it is not for the scientific AI community to play. No, it is not that they provide you with something from, for the good of their heart. Microsoft had a clear business case using GPT-4. And this is, we are in a highly profitable business area and this is global internet search. And we have a global player, Google. And the message, the mission was clear. Develop a system that here we have market share and our goal is to absorb market share from Google over to Microsoft and you remember each percentage point of market share in the global AI ad revenue market is worth tens of billions of dollars. So this was the mission for GPT-4. And if you ask me, why is GPT-4 trained on more or less the complete internet? Because this is what's the task it was built to take away here the market share from the global search engines and therefore they have to have the global internet more or less in their training data set. This was the mission. And as I showed you, oops, no, wait. At the time of recording, one percentage point from the Google market share went over to Microsoft. Now you decide as a CEO of Microsoft, if one percentage point after, I don't know, now two, three months, the GPT-4 is operational, is a success. So whenever you see this video, go check out in your time bracket, what is your percentage point of market share that Microsoft could cling on to from Google. And then you will see Microsoft is not in such a beautiful position, but they have their own problems too. So let's have a look at this. Yeah, before I have to tell you, I was, I forgot something unbelievable, eh? because there's another model. And to, to my shame, it is a European model. So Bloom, mid 2022, we had about 1000 AI researcher that came together because they wanted to build an open LLM model. They called their consortium Big Science, and at the time it was coordinated by a small, insignificant little AI startup with the name of Hugging Face. The funding came from European, but primarily French government sources, so the public invested here in a French supercomputer center near Paris, and they were able, with 1,000 researchers, to train here these models for 117 days on a French supercomputer. Bloom, by the way, stands for big science, large, open science, open access, multilingual language models. So if you now choose in the AI community, which model to use? Black box model, completely restricted model, my good old flan T5, there's Bloom. And you know what? Oh yeah. <laughs> I just read yesterday that Elon Musk now purchased 10,000 GPUs and recruited AI talent from the company I just introduced to you, DeepMind, from Google. So I wonder what he will do with 10,000 GPUs that are more or less exactly what you need here to train GPT-4 or the successor of GPT-4 after signing the letter for a six month period to pause all GPT development. Elon Musk purchased 10,000 GPUs. They are coincidence in life, isn't it beautiful? But let's, let me introduce you to something I found out just days ago, that in April, 2023, we have a purpose built LLM from scratch for the financial sector. And it is called Bloomberg. GPT, and it has 50 billion trainable parameters. And Bloomberg decided that the complexity and the unique terminology of the financial domain in the US warrant a domain specific LLM model. This is amazing in itself. 
This is the first financial LLM. And you know, they had a unique market position because they could use their financial data. Because all the data available on the Bloomberg terminal, and if you're not familiar, this is a huge information source for the financial sector to better help the firm's customers while bringing the full potential of AI to the financial domain with now this Bloomberg terminal has now the support of AI with Bloomberg GPT. So they have this extensive in-house top secret archive of the financial data, I think of 30 plus years of the American finance market. And they created a data set. They created a 363 billion token data set consisting only of one language, English, consisting only of one topic, finance. I mean, to collect 363 billion token data set only on finance, my goodness. But this is a unique in-house data set. And then they wanted that this AI supported terminal 2, maybe let's call it, was able to chat with normal people. That yeah, this Bloomberg GPT will be able to speak the Bloomberg financial language, you know, with all of this financial abbreviation, all of those company abbreviation, no problem at all. But it should be a system that is open also to the non-Wall Street broker. So they added in the training data, 345 billion token of some public data set, but they curated it very intelligently. So together they created now a training data set of over 700 billion tokens. But 55% is pure financial data. And this 45% is just that you have this nice chat talking ability. Beautifully. But you know what is the most fascinating point for me? That Bloomberg decided, so a billionaire, American billionaire, working together with an Ivory League university in the US, decided not to use GPT-4. They decided to go with a model that is based on the European Bloom. They decided to go with a model that is so open that 1,000 scientists participated. This is a model that is highly transparent. Everybody could go there, try to understand, learn from this model, play with this model. This is a model that has a steep learning curve. It's absolutely transparent and we know the architecture of this model quite well. GPT-4 is black box. So they decided, and they have even a research paper, a research preprint on archive server. I leave the link for this paper, 65 pages of highly informative information about Bloomberg GPT to go with the Bloom architecture. Now, this is not so, so great for Microsoft because even if American companies do not use Microsoft capabilities, the GPT-4 system, the best system in the world that knows everything in the world, this is not so great, but you know, it is even worse because do you notice that there was a player missing from the global three player, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon? Bloomberg decided to go with the Amazon AWS, with SageMaker, Model Parallelism, Parallel Computing, of course. And you know, I'm not familiar that Amazon published a model by itself, but I'm familiar that Amazon invests massively in hardware compute infrastructure. So whoever will have a business to create their own LLM, well, Amazon will have the hardware compute infrastructure for you. Yes, of course, Microsoft also wants to sell their compute resources, but for some reason, they decided to go with AWS for maintenance, daily operation, everything. And it is interesting for us here in the scientific community that after all the tests, Bloomberg came out and said, we have in the financial sector a system that outperforms any other system. They think that the cause 
of success is because of three reasons. They have a well curated internal financial data set that is unique. They have a data set, 363 billion token financial data set. Wow. This is it. This is a monster data set that they could train it on and really have a domain specific, but also augmented for a normal chatting functionality. This is unique. And then they had a unique choice of a tokenizer. Remember, we have in all our models, when we have the raw data set, we have to tokenize the data. And the tokenizer they choose is not a byte per encoding or a sentence based encoding. No, they choose, because of the financial data, a unigram tokenizer, which is really clever. Well, of course, it was an Ivory University in the background. And then they chose a specific LLM architecture, the Bloom architecture. I think we can learn so much from this decision. And please have a look at the archive preprint 65 pages where they really show you the performance, the argumentation, the reasoning, the evaluation. It is really great to learn. And if you're interested on the hardware infrastructure, I show you here in the last line, they used from AWS 512 GPUs. And they even went with the small 40 gigabyte version of the A100 NVIDIA data center Tensor Core GPU. And they let 512 GPUs run for 53 days to train their own LLM. Now, if you think about depending on the region of the world and the urgency that you need the data and, 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 as a rough estimate in my region of the world, eight A100 GPU cost about $20 per hour. So you see for roughly, depends if days and nights, let's say in worst case, he had to spend $1.5 million to create his own top secret with his own data, perfectly focused and optimized financial LLM, the first in the world. One and a half million dollars for the complete data of the financial sector in an LLM is less than the annual bonus of one Wall Street broker. This shows you the power of artificial intelligence in a marketplace. But it also shows you if this is something to go with that Microsoft, who wants to use GPT-4, might have a problem with being a system that is that huge and includes everything for everybody. Because you can see the industry may need a system that is highly focused on their private industry sector data and only on their data. Let's have a look at this. Let's think about a scenario. How you can use your own LLM if you decide when to fine tune it, if you decide when to update it, if you decide what to do with the input data, the length of your input commands, it is your system. So imagine you have 100 finance broker and there's a day when you monitor their actions, the investment they take, their recommendations, they communicate to their clients. In this day one, a lot of financial transactions are happening. In the evening, you can simply evaluate their performance. If everything happened about terminal or Bloomberg terminals, you know what's happening in this day. You can have now with your Bloomberg GPT, you and an LLM is also able to do predictions. You can run here simulations of financial scenarios. You can run 100 simulation of your financial scenarios if you just code it because you have the data and in the data, there are all the patterns you want to discover and use the pattern, a complex data pattern in your financial data for making decisions, for making recommendation for your clients. So let's say in the evening, and this is just my idea, simple as I am. You just do in the night, you fine tune the AI system with the data from this day one. So the system learns 
what happened in the real world, and maybe the system runs 100 synthetic simulation based on the Bloomberg GPT knowledge. Now it is easy, you win in both cases if you have your own LLM. Because if the human outperform on this day, you have new training data for fine-tuning your Bloomberg GPT. So all the data, what they did, go over and fine-tune here the next version of Bloomberg GPT. If the machine outperforms and you say, hey, the machine shows me in the simulation, this would have been the perfect way to invest and to make recommendations to our clients, you have new training data for the humans to learn. And you have complex data patterns that are suddenly uncovered and the humans understand what they have to look for in their data. So you see it's a win-win situation if you have your own AI system. Why is it that Bloomberg decided not to go with GPT-4? There's a very simple reason you should know. And it is you can't find your own GPT-4. You can't insert your data into GPT-4 for fine-tuning. So what you do, and the research community is creative, is highly intelligent, and they discovered that if they can't use here the weights of GPT-4 for the training, for the prediction, for the fine-tuning, there is a way in, and it's called in-context learning. I showed you in my last video about fine-tuning versus in-context learning. Here we have a lot of limitation. The prompt has a length of 4K or 32K, and you have to play around here to get access. Yes, you have your API, let's say from OpenAI, your API, that you can filter in and filter out information. But let's look at this in detail. With GPT-4, you can't learn GPT-4 new data via fine-tuning. Because this system is so big and it includes everything for everybody. If you come now with, I don't know, one trillion financial data, hey, this is a system for anything, for everybody and all the time. So you are forced to use, if you want to use this system at all, in context learning. So we know we have multiple in context learning text strings we can insert here. We have a 4K limited prompt, or with the new models, we have a 32K limited prompt. You can chain now your prompts together, small chains, medium chain, and long chains. You have a sequential and partial output after the chains from GPT-4. You try to store this output, this, this partial little bit of intelligence, on locally attached memory elements to GPT-4, in the way of in-context learnings. And remember, you're operating here with vectors. And those memory elements, those are close to the surface of GPT-4, which in itself is a machine with half a trillion trainable parameters. Now think about this situation from an economic point of view. Imagine, you enter a room, you enter the room of the supercomputer for Microsoft. It is freezing cold, it is brutally loud, and you are standing in front of a wall of supercomputers, and you take out of your pocket a handheld Texas instrument, a TI-55 I had when I was young, and you start to input data on your Texas instrument, handheld computer device, and you try to get access with the TI-55 to the supercomputer center. You are standing in, but you are not allowed to use it. You are not allowed to interface your data via fine-tuning. So you have to go with in-context learning and you have to do piece-by-piece piece chaining. Imagine you pay for vector embeddings that you get out of the system because you have your vector store somewhere. You pay for the chaining where third-party input providers provide the data you need for your chains. So you pay them. Then you pay for the return tokens and the list goes on and on. And you know what you have that you still can't fine-tune GPT-4 with your data. 
So you can't have the GPT-4 works for your task. This is a situation you have to be aware of that maybe you are standing in front of the wrong machine for the task you want to achieve. Maybe you understand that the way Bloomberg and the Ivory League University in the US, that the way they choose for the financial sector in the US is the way to go. It is not because currently there is a hype of GPT-4 that is so big that you can't fine-tune it for your data. And as much as I think that it is a clever way to attach multiple chains and vector stores and whatever, you are standing for one of the most voluminous artificial intelligence system in a supercomputer center. And you take out your Texas Instrument TI-55 and you chain the commands on your Texas Instrument handheld device because you can't move in GPT-4 and use it. This is a situation I would call interesting. So maybe you decide for your clients and you work for your clients that you just look half with your attention here at GPT-4, but maybe you learn and I learn something from looking at Bloomberg GPT, how they found the perfect solution for their business case, for their clients, for their customer in an industrial sector. Maybe sometimes you have to understand you're standing in front of the wrong machine. So, here we go. What else? In Europe, you have now the idea that you are not only looking at the financial sector, but you're also looking at the clinical sector, the medical sector. And the idea to purpose build from scratch something for clinical tasks. So there is now consortium forming where multiple hospitals and multiple countries of the European Union try to come together, build a consortium, create a virtual data cluster within the hospitals and with the aim to develop together one LLM for clinical use. You have the European laws protecting intellectual property rights. You have the European laws for human rights, for data privacy, for your clinical data privacy, for your medical records, and, and, and. So this is a very interesting configuration, which is completely different to the American side. And the aim that they currently have is, imagine if all their diagnostic analysis of all, let's say we have 50 doctors in the hospitals, or 500 doctors, doesn't matter. And all their analysis, whatever they did, they wrote down in the medical records over several years. And we have also, looking back on the years, the results of their treatment. How good were they? What happened if a treatment was successful? What happened under what condition it was not successful? If you have all those, this data, this medical, clinical data, available in the hospital, so when you as a patient maybe enter the hospital, you have an AI system with the complete knowledge of all treatments, of all doctors and all division and all interplay and all medical hidden pattern in the data. This is something they're currently exploring to establish within the European Union. Now you can extend this, of course, with telemedicine. You can find now a user application for elderly care. So I think here the growth sector of this economical sector is really unlimited if you go currently and if you're interested here to focus here on this side. And you see I've chosen this presentation with GPT-4 here on one side and here dedicated, let's say, Bloom LLMs on the other side. Sometimes you have to be a little bit careful if you listen to the marketing materials of global players who have a mission, who want to achieve something and who do everything to convince you that their machine is the best machine, when in reality, maybe you should have a look, just a small look at the side and discover the other possibilities you should invest your time and your energy in.
Beautiful. If you want to learn a little bit more about it, I have here a video on my channel where I talk about Bloom 176 on AWS. This is here the video. I talk about here uh, model parallelism, pipeline parallelism, tensor parallelism that is implemented if you fine tune a Bloom 176 billion parameter model. You talk, we talk about deep speed, hugging face accelerate, everything about here, deep speed inference, the theory behind it. If you are interested here in the legal license situation with Bloom, what is the legal situation regarding intellectual property right in Europe? I have here a video where I show you in detail the legal license of Bloom, this big science initiative. And if you're not, as I showed you here, interested in just jumping to the AWS cluster for training or fine tuning your Bloom, your full Bloom model, there are smaller Bloom models available. And I have two videos here for you where I implement a smaller Bloom model on a free Google Colab notebook. You can go there, there is a Python file for you to play around with. Or if you want, I have here Bloom for local on your PC. You need a little bit of RAM on your machine, but these systems run also locally on your PC. But of course, if you wanna do some professional work, you might go to AWS and you might need a little bit of knowledge about deep speed and the ultimate parallel configuration you can use, maybe even a 3D. Anyway, whatever you decide, I think it's a fascinating topic. There are new opportunities in any industrial and service sector coming up. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. There was something in this video, some new ideas, and I would appreciate it if I see you in my next video.